Hey, what's up guys? Brian here, Brian's Law Maintenance. Trust you guys are doing well. All right, so check it out. I wanted to do a fun video for you guys, a little bit different topic here. I wanted to talk about different gasoline types, uh, whether it's 87, 89, 93, the different types of fuel that we use in our two-stroke handheld equipment. Now, a lot of you guys uh, on the 25K subscriber video commented uh, wanting to know why we use different fuel types uh, in our gas cans and in our two-stroke uh, handheld equipment. And I thought it was a really good question. Now, uh, a lot of people have done videos on this topic in the past, but I haven't really seen anything lately. And I wanted to talk to you guys about why we use different fuels and how to protect our equipment. As most of you guys know, I've been doing this for a minute. We've been uh, running our lawn and landscape business for 10 years. And when I got started a long time ago, I did not know that there was uh, different fuels that you should be using in your handheld equipment. In fact, uh, I learned from my dealer that we'd want to use, uh, generally speaking, 89 uh, fuel in our trimmers and blowers and equipment like that. But I didn't really understand why. And a lot of you guys understand uh, like the buzzword lately is ethanol, ethanol this, ethanol that. But uh, not to give you guys a super technical answer, uh, but I wanted to address some of the concerns and reasons why we use different fuel types in our handheld equipment. Now, as most of you guys know, I am uh, just a regular guy out here cutting grass, doing landscaping like most of you. So I don't have the most super technical answer, but I do have a resource for you guys. And I wanted to take a quick minute here. I actually have my friend Jason Wilkes on the phone. He is from Echo. And Jason is one of the uh, product managers over there. And he is just a super knowledgeable and educated uh, guy when it comes to talking about uh, the internals of engines and uh, some chemistry type stuff and just engineering. Super smart guy. I actually had the chance to meet Jason when I was at the Echo event uh, over in Lake Zurich, Illinois, uh, just about a year and a half ago. And him and I just hit it off. We had a really good conversation. Uh, I kept uh, asking him a ton of technical questions. And I think Jason really appreciated that too because we uh, got all nerded out. So uh, just talking about engines, right? But here's the deal. I've got Jason over here on the phone and he's going to take a few minutes here and talk talk to you guys uh, about why we use different fuel types in our engines and why 89 or 93 versus maybe just using regular 87 gas. So Jason, you there, brother? Yeah, I'm here. Hey, Brian, how's it going? Doing good, doing good. So it's my uh, four minute intro to introduce Jason. Uh, <laughs> so uh, J Jason and I, we've been cutting up uh, before we got to uh, hit record on the camera. So uh, Jason's my go-to guy. Whenever I have a technical question, I'm uh, always shooting a, an email or a question to Jason. So um, if you want to take it away, brother, uh, right now I'm in my trailer and you and I were just talking about the benefits of using different fuel types. What What's your technical answer or expertise? or How, how can you help us uh, understand why we should be using uh, maybe 91 or 93 versus maybe just regular unleaded gas and what does that do for like our handheld equipment and uh, especially like the longevity of, uh, of the internals of the engine sure sure yeah no absolutely it's a great question um, I probably get asked this question on a weekly basis just because you know you pull up to the gas station and typically there's three choices um, some of the gas stations on Midwest now are now adding you know, uh, ethanol free fuel, some of it is now uh, E15 fuel, so you're starting to see almost three, four, five different selectors. So, uh, yeah, for someone that's new to the industry, they pull to a gas station, they know they need to get some gas to mix with their oil for their two stroke, and it's like, right. which one do I choose? Sure, so, sure. Great question. Um, and uh, really, what, what, what Echo recommends is. Um, the mid-grade, the premium level. So if you were to look through any of the operator's manuals, any Echo product, probably dating back 25 years, it would say Echo recommends a minimum octane rating of 89, which typically is the mid-grade, depending upon your gas station, sure. um, or higher. So um, really the way I like to start with octane is what is it? What does it refer to, right? So the, the definition of octane is the fuel's ability to resist spontaneous combustion uh, caused by either high heat and or high compression. So kind of a technical response there, but basically the differences in the octane numbers are the fuel's ability to resist the fuel exploding in the engine, which is bad. We don't want that. Okay. Um, when the fuel actually ignites in the engine, we want it to be a nice controlled burn. Now, control, I mean, obviously this is happening sometimes 200 times in a second, right? But the way I like to picture it is if you throw a, a pebble a pebble into a lake, right, you kind of get that ripple effect. Mm -hmm. That's how fuel really should be burning within the combustion chamber of your engine. If that fuel is just exploding and letting all its power out at once, then that can actually lead to, uh, I don't know if you remember uh, kind of 
growing up uh, cars that would knock under load or people were complaining about knocking of the engine. Sure. That was usually that fuel detonating or exploding within the engine. Um, and that just wreaks havoc. Um, literally, you can have an engine, it looks like someone opened it up and just smashed it with a hammer. That, that detonation or that explosion of the fuel is so violent, it can literally just blow apart the internal workings of the engine. Wow. So, Holy cow. We recommend... Yeah, yeah. It's uh, nowadays with gas, you know, gas cars. They have the technology. They have the computer systems. They can sense, you know, that it's knocking. They can change the timing accordingly. So literally, that's constantly being monitored by a computer as you're driving your car. Okay. Um, and it's adjusted, and you don't have to worry about your engines or your pistons basically getting hammered to death by detonation. Okay. Well, on power equipment, um, obviously EFI is starting to kind of make a presence in some of the bigger four-stroke models and commercial turf models. But for a lot of the handheld equipment, like all the Echo products and steel products and the Husqvarna's and the Red Max, they're still carbureted units. Mm -hmm. um, there's some level of technology built in the ignition modules nowadays, but nothing that can actually sense and then change timing based on detonation. So we, we recommend the mid-grade to the premium uh, for two reasons. One is to reduce the likelihood of that fuel actually detonating or violently exploding in that engine. Again, that's caused from either high heat um, or high compression. Uh, pretty much any commercial grade two-stroke engine, it's fairly high compression, um, but you're also dealing with a air-cooled engine. So if you're using an engine that's firing 200 times a second, um, you're out in Arizona where it's 104 degrees, um, you know, you're basically blowing hot air over a hot engine, that thing is gonna get hot. We don't want that fuel detonating. Right. Now, the difference with uh, a two-stroke handheld equipment is, you know, you're kind of limited on the size of the muffler you can physically put on one of these units. Um, so because of the, the sound and the, the small muffler design um, of the two strokes, you couldn't actually hear that detonation happening like you can in the older cars. So you can be running a unit trimming and that fuel can be exploding over and over and over again. Mm -hmm. um, and basically next thing you know, your engine just kind of stops working. Um, gotcha. So, we recommend that mid-grade, the premium. Will the engine start and run on an 87? Absolutely, um, but the 89 is more of a kind of an insurance policy. Is it'll run on an 87? Okay, it's super hot out. Maybe you're loading that engine up. You know, you're you're forcing those hedge clipper blades to cut a branch. It's probably not designed to. You know, maybe your chainsaw chain's a little dull and you're forcing that chainsaw to cut. You're really pushing that engine, you know, super hard. Uh, we don't want that fuel to start uh, basically exploding. So it gives you a little extra leeway um, based on the band of the engine, temperature, ambient temperature, uh, to prevent the fuel from exploding in the engine. So now with that being said, um, can we use 91? Can we use 93? Absolutely. The higher the octane, the better. Mm -hmm. um, some people believe that, you know, in the higher octane will burn faster or hotter or slower. The, and that's, that's inaccurate. Octane re strictly refers to the fuel's ability to resist spontaneous combustion. So uh, 87 octane versus 91, same BTU output, same power potential. Uh, it doesn't burn any faster or slower or hotter or colder than any other of the other octane ratings out there Okay. Uh, when we're talking power equipment. So absolutely, can you use 91, 93? Yes. Um, that's what I personally recommend uh, in my, and that's what I use in my equipment. Okay. Because it's just that much higher of a quality of a fuel. And typically, too, when you get into the 91s and the 93 octanes, you start getting a lot more kind of what I call goodie packages in the gasoline. Sure. More detergents. It keeps that engine clean. It keeps your piston rings, uh, grooves clean. Uh, it just keeps the engine cleaner overall. Okay. Well, that's that. Honestly, I I, I uh, had so many misconceptions, I guess, with uh, you know it was eighty nine or bust, um, but I didn't have uh, any idea that it was talking about the explosibility of uh, or the firing capacity, whatever you guys want to call it, with uh, the the rating. I, I thought it was just how much the ethanol content was in there, and um, you know when when you talk to folks, it's always ethanol this, ethanol that, and to me, yep. I, I thought the eighty nine was going to help prevent. Uh, the uh, internals from degrading faster because it had less ethanol. Is there is that is that kind of what is a misnomer out there, or is there some merit to that, or how does that? 
Yeah, I mean, really the kind of the Midwest, uh, which is where I was born and raised, so it's kind of the first area that started getting ethanol fuel, which is basically an additive that's uh, refined grain alcohol from corn, right? So right, right. We've actually been dealing with, with ethanol here since late 80s, early 90s, so we've had it for a long time now. Sure. We've now seen it kind of expand across the entire country with different EPA requirements for Clean Air Act and stuff, but... Um, for the most part, and I'm sure there's little pockets of areas that this may not pertain to, but for 90%, I'd say, of the country, there's 10% alcohol or ethanol, uh, which is a form of alcohol, added to all gasoline blends across the entire country. So hmm. an 87, an 89, a 91, a 93, if you were to take samples of all those and test the alcohol content, you're in the right around that 10% average. Oh, wow. So. So, so there is not less ethanol necessarily in 87 to 93. Um, the, the big talking point for us is why, why we use 91 and 93 is for the combustibility or whatever you want to call it for the internals of the engine. Huh. Yeah, it, absolutely. So um, it really has to do with just the compression requirements of the engine. So if anyone has the opportunity, unfortunately I don't, but uh, a high-end luxury car or a high-performance sports car, a lot of those operators' manuals are going to recommend uh, a 91 or a 93 premium type of fuel to use all the time. Sure. Um, just for that engine to maximize the amount of power. It doesn't have to change the timing to prevent that fuel from exploding. Oh. Uh, so when you get into the higher end vehicles, sure. the manual will say use 91 or higher, 93, you know, minimum. Uh, it really has to do exactly, uh, it's a direct correlation to the compression uh, design of that engine. That, dude, that is so interesting you say that because um, I have a, an Infinity, which I always call as my uh, my Walmart yeah. lu luxury car, <laughs> and uh, it's, yeah. it's it's my it's my it's my entry luxury car, and uh, in the yeah. manual it says I can use 87, but it's going to uh, yeah. like like you said change the compression ratios and burn uh, not as efficient, and you'll probably end up going through more fuel versus if I just yeah. use 93, that's what the car was designed to run yeah. on. So, wow, no kid, I. Exactly. This is good. I, I Hopefully you guys are learning something. I know this is a different kind of video, but um, there's just so much misinformation out there, I feel, when it comes to talking about ethanol and and silver versus premium gas, you know what I mean? Um, and so that's that's why I said, you know, I, I it's, news is nothing but uh, old stuff to new people, I think is the saying, and everybody does gas videos and why 89 and why premium, but I don't really see too many technical answers, and uh, Jason is a guy who knows his stuff, and so when we were in uh, like Lake Zurich, Illinois, you and I, I think we're having like 10 breakout conversations that couple days, because <laughs> uh, I really I really enjoyed talking to you about all like the, the red arm oil and, and how exactly how exactly exactly and because I'm I, you know by design I'm I don't know if it's just being a, a dude and a male or just being a skeptic um, you know I, I was like what is exactly going on here and so um, no this was, this was good if if you had to if you had to summarize what, what would you say summarize why, why would we want to use 9193 it's just so things burn more efficiently and what the engines designed for is that what I guess you're saying so it so it stays the life uh, cycle can stay yeah. longer I, I like to refer to it as a little bit of extra insurance for the couple of cents you're paying more per, per gallon is. It's going to have more detergents than a standard 87 octane. It's going to keep that engine clean. It's going to keep uh, the ring grooves of the two-stroke engine uh, clean. And really, that's the number one uh, mechanical failure of a two-stroke engine is a stuck ring. Sure. So the ring will stick based on deposits uh, from the combustion process. So the ring can stick one of two ways. It can stick closed into the ring groove, mm -hmm. uh, which now you start losing compression and losing power, or sometimes you get build up behind the ring that actually pushes the ring out and then what happens there the ring can actually catch in one of the typically the exhaust port um, break a ring and then your engine shot so oh. uh, uh, the mid grades of yeah the mid grades of premiums will keep the engine nice and clean and should you be overworking the engine using it in a super hot environment uh, maybe you have some dirt or debris kind of clogged around your cooling air intakes it's going to ensure that that fuel is not going to be exploding in that engine and damaging 
Hey, that's uh, that's fair enough. That's a good. That's a incentive alone just to use that. <laughs> so, well, and that's the yeah. thing. That's the thing. Like, you, everything has a, a best practice or a um, you know uh, the best way to utilize that tool. Um, and and gas and gasoline. I mean, it's like obviously one of the staple uh, resources for our business, but. Um, there's just not usually a lot of conversation about it because it's, you know, at best you fill up and go. And if you know what you're doing, it's 89 and go. But I don't really see a lot of uh, technical answers behind it. And this is the kind of stuff that I, I, I really appreciate because if I'm in business to make money and to save money and to keep my equipment working longer, this is the kind of stuff you need to know. So I super, I personally appreciate the time. Hopefully you guys are getting some stuff out of this, but uh, this is helping me and my business. Um, and I really appreciate the, the the technical answer versus just all the, like I said, the misinformation out there that just gets diluted, polluted, and um, you know regurgitated. And um, so Jason's my go-to guy. So um, I really appreciate the, the time, brother. Um, l let me ask you this. Um, if, if people have other questions, I know we were uh, talking about this for just a quick second off camera, but if folks, uh, w so let me just say this. I really appreciate Echo. A lot of you guys know I'm a huge Echo fanboy, okay? And there's a reason for it. I, I like doing business with good people and these guys um, make themselves always available to the community. And one thing that I really appreciate is when I have questions, I message these guys all the time live video got a call coming in love it but when, when i have questions i always message uh their people and ask these guys and that's where i get a lot of my answers from so if folks have questions uh, on this or even other topics that might be pertainable where where can folks get more information i this isn't just a plug for echo means business.com all right guys relax but where where some folks uh where can folks go to get more technical answers if they have stuff like this uh if you guys got a resource jason yeah, absolutely. No, it's a great question. Um, our echo-usa.com website, uh, we have some resources there with a lot of the frequently asked questions, um, which you can access obviously 24-7. And we'll talk about, you know, why do I need 89 octane fuel? What type of oil, you know, should I use? How do I mix the gas? And all those common frequently asked questions are on our website. Okay. Um, we also have a consumer support department that's open to the general public. It's an 800 number. You can call in to actually talk to representatives that are sitting here in like Zurich, Illinois, they can answer any of the questions. Um, and then, of course, you know, we're available for questions through, you know, Facebook. Uh, we have a, a chat uh, function through our uh, Echo USA, again, website. So cool. we're always here to help and we're always happy to help, too. No, dude, that's that's so cool. Like, I, honestly, I know you guys have personally helped me with my business, and uh, hopefully, I'm sure other uh, folks out there as well. But no, this is good. I I, I appreciate the technical answer. Um, it, for me personally, I'm kind of a nerd when it comes to this stuff, and I want to know the real answers, not just like I said, regurgitated info. So, um, Jason's uh, actually like literally in 24 hours catching a plane. He's got a huge corporate uh, uh, date on the calendar. So I said, Jason, I need to do a, a video with me. He's like, Sure, man. Can we do it tomorrow morning? And I said, Let's do it because um, after this he's gonna be gone for a week and a half so Jason thank you for taking time out of your calendar and your busy day uh, uh, I super appreciate it and I know all of our viewers and fans will too so if you guys if you guys watch this far leave me a comment say thanks Jason uh, we really appreciate it so um, that's pretty much it for me brother so thanks for the time any uh, other thoughts or closing remarks you got while I got gotcha? No, I appreciate the time. I love talking about this stuff. It's a passion of mine. I've been doing this for too many years now, so I love to mention. <laughs> but uh, love talking about it. Love helping you guys out. And, uh, yeah, any other questions you guys need, uh, keep them coming in. Well, if you guys get other questions, uh, technical questions on engines or like the Red Armor Fuel or why versus other companies or competitors, or if you guys got um, any kind of technical engineering questions, Jason's your go-to guy. Well, I super appreciate the time, Jason. Thank you so much, sir. If uh, if you guys have any questions, like I said, leave them down below in the comment section. Uh, maybe future ideas or future uh, technical questions. Maybe we can um, start doing some more maintenance type videos for you guys. But if you guys enjoyed this one, uh, like I said, shoot a big thumbs up and definitely subscribe if you guys are new. I appreciate it uh, big time. And then, uh, like I said, dude, say thank you to Jason down in the comment section down below because uh, this took about 20 minutes of his time and literally he's flying on an airplane in uh, just about 12 hours. So, all right guys, that's pretty much it. Brian here, Brian's Law Maintenance. We'll catch you guys on the next one. Bye-bye.